Hello, and welcome once again to the Ministry of Reconciliation in Truth, a home-style Bible study where we present God's Word from God's perspective and in truth. Now, we study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. But we shun profane and vain babbling, for that will lead unto more ungodliness, which also things we speak, not in the words that man's wisdom teaches, but that the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now these four biblical references can be found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 and 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, and 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, once again for taking the time to observe this video. It's greatly appreciated. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I always ask you a very simple question. Do you really believe God when you read his word as to what he says? Today's topic, the Antichrist. The biblical truth will shock the world. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I please ask that you observe this entire video before you come to any conclusion. And I ask that you grab your Bible and have it open and read along with me and look it up for yourselves. There is, again, thousands of videos out there pertaining to the Antichrist. Many, many teachings, many, many sermons, many books have been written, even movies been made about the Antichrist. Today's presentation may challenge you with every ounce of your being as to what you've believed before and what you've been taught. But again, please observe the entire video. The first thing we're going to look at, ladies and gentlemen, is the man's version or definition of the Antichrist. It says, in Christian eschatology, which is the study of Christianity, the Antichrist is someone recognized as fulfilling the biblical prophecies about one who will oppose Christ and substitute himself in Christ's place before the second coming. The term is found five times in the New Testament solely in the first and second epistles of John. Well, they got that right, that part of it anyway, where it's found. But that's man's uh, definition of the Antichrist. Now, we have to look at it from a biblical standpoint here, but we're going to look at it from man's perspective and God's perspective, but mainly God's perspective today. And I'm going to show you a lot of scripture, and we're going to read it together. We're going to look first at the beast in the book of Revelation, where he appears first in Daniel, and then where he appears also throughout Scripture, and in the book of Revelation. It's very important that we're going to show you the beast and the Antichrist today. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Daniel, ladies and gentlemen. And when you get to the book of Daniel, go to chapter 7. The book of Daniel is right after the book of Ezekiel. And we're going to start in chapter 7 and verse 15. Daniel had a dream, and he was given many visions in his dream. And he kind of, <coughs> excuse me, talks about that. And we'll start in verse 15. He says, I, Daniel, now this is about the beast. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. Verse 16, I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me known the interpretations of things. Verse 18, But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and even forever and ever. Verse 19, Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast which was diverse from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, broken pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet 
verse 20, and of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke very great things, who, look, was more stout than his fellows. Verse 21, And I beheld that same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Verse 22, Until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. <coughs> Excuse me, verse 23, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall be so it shall devour the whole earth, and it shall break it and tread it down and break it into pieces. And verse 24, And the ten horns out of this kingdom are the ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Verse 25, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given unto his hand, until a time and times in the dividing of times. Verse 26, But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion, to consume and to destroy it until the end. That's in the book of Daniel, and this will be explained more so in the book of Revelation about the beast. But we're going to look now at Matthew chapter 24. Let's go to your book, Matthew chapter 24. This is concerning the beast now from God's perspective, ladies and gentlemen. Chapter 24 of Matthew, starting in verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end shall come. Verse 15. When, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Who readeth, let him understand. We just read in Daniel about the mighty little horn with eyes and a mouth that could speak. It's going to sit in the throne of God's temple and he's going to desolate it. And let's not stop there. Let's look at 2 Thessalonians. Just keep going to your right, right after 1 Thessalonians, of course, just before the book of 1 Timothy. 2 Thessalonians, and let's start in verse 3 of chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Verse 4. Who upholdeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Then he says in verse 5, Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. Verse 6, And now you know that which withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. This is the beast. Verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity already doth work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And he that shall, in verse 8, And then shall that wicked one be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Verse 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And the beast of Revelation. And then let's go to book of Revelation, chapter 17. Go to the book of Revelation, excuse me, chapter 13, I'm sorry. Chapter 13, And we'll read, we have a lot to read here, but just be patient, it's important. We'll start in verse, uh, chapter 13, verse 1. And this is John getting the revelation from Jesus Christ. And I stood, John, upon the sand of the seas, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name, that, upon his heads the name of blasphemy. 
Verse 2, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power, which is Satan, and his seat, and of great authority. Verse 3, And then I saw one of the heads as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Verse 4, And they worshipped the dragon, and they gave, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Verse 5, And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things, and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty-two months. Verse 6, And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And verse 7, It was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given unto him in all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And verse 9, If any man have an ear, let him hear. For verse 10 says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. This is the beast he's talking about. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. And we'll continue in verse 13. <coughs> excuse, me, excuse me, the uh, second beast comes into, <coughs> excuse me, into play here. No, I don't have the virus. Verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. Verse 12, And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused the earth and them that dwell in there to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Verse 13, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth and in the sight of men. Verse 14, And deceiveth them, that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying unto them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. Verse 15, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. The second beast did. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And verse 16, And he caused us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads. <clears throat> or in their foreheads. Verse 17, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Verse 18, Here is wisdom, let him that has understanding. Count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man. His number is six hundred three score. And six, <clears throat> excuse me, in other words, six, six, six. Now this is biblical reference from God's perspective about the beast. Now, I hope you understand when I try and emphasize this in all my videos, when you read the word of God, you read it carefully and you read it slowly. I read it a little faster because we have a lot to cover here, but take, go back with the references and read them again. And pay close attention to what it says as too much as what it does not say. It mentioned the beast every time. Now the beast mentioned in the book of Daniel is the Kea. It's spelled C-H-E-Y-V-A. It's in the Hebrew. It just means an animal. It can mean a docile animal, it can mean a cow, it can mean a wildebeest, anything that's an animal. <clears throat> now, the one mentioned in the book of Revelation is the Therion in the Greek, a very dangerous beast. Keep that in mind. But I just wanted to show you that that is the beast of the book of Revelation and the book of Daniel. And that is the beast of end time prophecies coming in the ages to come. Now, and you paid attention, I hope, to when we read Daniel and, and the references we read in Matthew and 2 Thessalonians and in the book of Revelation. There's no mention of the word Antichrist. Just 
letting you know that. Okay, now, let's look at the Antichrist of Scripture from God's perspective. Then we'll put all this together with God's perspective versus man's perspective. <clears throat> Excuse me. The term Antichrist or Christ is found five times in Scripture and is found in the book of John. Okay? The word Antichrist in the Greek is Antichrist Christo, excuse me, Antichristos. Antichristos is how it's pronounced in the Greek, which means an opponent of Jesus Christ. Very important to understand that. Now let's read the verses in the epistle, not the book of John, but the epistle of John. Right after First and Second Peter, you'll find the three epistles of John. But let's start in John chapter 1, verse, excuse me, in First John chapter 2, verse 18. First John chapter 2, verse 18 says, Little children, it is the last time, and as if you have as and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, plural, whereby we know that it is the last time. Pay attention to what the verses say. Now let's go to First uh, John, staying in chapter two, verse twenty-two. Who is a liar, but he that deceiveth, that or denieth? Excuse me. Let me start over. Verse twenty-two says, "Who." is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Now let's look at first, first John chapter 4, verse 3. First John chapter 4, verse 3 says, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now is already in the world. Let me repeat verse 3. Verse 3 says, And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is not of God, and is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. And then let's go to 2 John 7. 2 John, verse 7. Verse 7 says, now this is 2 John, the second epistle of John, for many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Now you listened to what the Word of God said about the beast and the Antichrist. Now, let's get one thing out in the open right now. The Antichrist is an opponent of Jesus Christ. What is an opponent? The Greek word for the Antichrist is Antichristos. Anti meaning an opponent. An opponent is somebody that goes against what, let's say, you believe or what you represent. You find this in politics all the time. Somebody is anti this guy and somebody is anti this person because they have different beliefs. But you will know what the beliefs are. It is presented to you <clears throat> just like the Antichrist. The Antichrist is one that denies Jesus Christ came in the flesh, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that Jesus Christ is the Spirit. These that deny it are an Antichrist. But you know from Scripture who they are up front. Just like you know somebody that opposes, let's say you're running for an office and you want to do this and this and this, but your opponent, who is an anti-you, wants to do this and this and this. And they present their part and you present your part, and everybody knows about it. 
Okay? Important to remember that. There are many, many helpers in Antichrist out there. And let's look at some of the references. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. If you go to the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. Matthew 24, verse 5, and this is when they ask Jesus Christ, you know, when the end shall come, what are we going to know about it? And this is what he says about verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Let me repeat that. He said, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And then let's go to 2 Corinthians. In the letter, one of the letters Paul wrote, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And let's start in verse 12. It says, But what I do, that I will do, Paul writes, that I may cut off occasion from them that desire occasion, for wherein they glory, they are may not be found as we. For verse 13, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Verse 14, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transferred into the angel of light. Verse 15, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed into the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the Antichrist is not the beast of the book of Revelation. Scripture just showed you something very, very important and critical. If you read the Word of God and you believe the Word of God as to what God says, leave man out of the equation right now. The book of Daniel mentions nothing about an antichrist. It's not in there. You can't put it in there. Don't adulterate God's Word. Leave it the way it is. There's no mention of an antichrist in the references that were read to you from God's perspective to include the book of Daniel, chapter 7, to include Matthew, chapter four, uh, 24, verse 14, and also Second Thessalonians, chapter 2, what Paul wrote, and then what I gave you in the book of Revelation, in chapter 13. There's no mention of an Antichrist. Now, I gave you what an Antichristos is, an opponent, I explained to you what an opponent is. <clears throat> the beast, <coughs> excuse me, is not an opponent of Jesus Christ. The beast is a deceiver of Jesus Christ. One that deceives will not present themselves as somebody that's totally opposite of the other person. Because if they do that, they'll be recognized right away. What will they do? They will make themselves appear to be like that person. The beast makes himself out to look like Jesus Christ in miracle signs and wonders, being raised from the dead from a deadly wound. Jesus Christ died on the cross. Yet what happened? He was buried. He rose again. What happens to the beast? The beast receives a mortal wound to the head and is healed. And people see this. And these miracle signs and wonders were done among men. What did Jesus Christ do on his physical ministry? He did miracle signs and wonders in front of men, mankind just like the beast is going to be doing. But the beast in all this time is presenting himself as Jesus Christ. In fact, he goes and he sits in the very throne of God presenting himself, deceiving the people that he is truly God and they believe him. He's not showing them that he's the opposite, that he's an opponent of Jesus Christ. No way, Satan's too clever for that. He'll show them once he sits in the throne of God and desolates the throne of God, then the stuff will hit the fan and the people will realize it and it's too late. That he deceived them completely. And that's the second coming of Jesus Christ. It takes care of business. Now you look at what you've been presented with. And let me make the statement again. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no way, shape or form, you can take from the word of God and God's perspective and tell people the Antichrist is the beast of the book of Revelation. It does not line up. 
If you do that, you're teaching wrong doctrine that makes you a false teacher. You look at what's been happening over the last almost 2,000 years. Man, mankind in his finite wisdom and finite mind has been taking it from his perspective of what he thinks God says, and he puts it in there. He takes and tells you that Daniel's talking about the Antichrist of the book of Revelation in chapter 7. No, he is not. He is talking about the beast, the first beast. It is plain if you look at it from God's perspective. If you look at it from man's perspective, they'll tell you whatever it is they want you to believe and get you to believe about their false doctrine, their wrong doctrine, and their false teaching. We showed you an Antichrist. Ladies and gentlemen, Antichrists have been in this world <clears throat> since the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, even before the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes didn't believe him. Your atheists today, they're all Antichrist. There's thousands in the world. And people, and man wants to tell you there's one Antichrist that's coming. And he is the Antichrist, the beast of the book of Revelation. Ask yourselves, can you believe that? Can you actually believe that? You've been taught that since you were little. Through your family, especially through your denomination, your preachers and your teachers, and your religion and Christian centers, your theologians. Look at all the thousands of videos out there that are made that tell you the Antichrist is the beast of the book of Revelation, the first beast. You've been shown from Scripture that is absolutely wrong doctrine. That is false teaching because it's no mention. You cannot compare the two because one is an opponent of Jesus Christ. That's the Antichrist. The other one is a deceiver of Jesus Christ. Two totally opposite ways of coming at this. The deceiver makes himself out to be like Jesus Christ. The opponent tells you, I am against Jesus Christ. And you know it. Yet man has over time taken the word of God and put his own influence in there and has been teaching you from the pulpit that the Antichrist is the beast of the book of Revelation. And Satan loves this because that gets you involved in end time prophecy. That gets your mind so focused on the Antichrist and things to come, you fall away from the body of Christ, doctrine from Romans to Philemon, that you should believe the gospel of Jesus Christ found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4 for your salvation. And you should apply the doctrine from Romans to Philemon to your lives today. You don't do that. You're so involved in end time prophecy and so concerned about who the Antichrist is, you're led astray from this. And you are so easily done so by false teachers. Your pastor and your denomination and your non-denomination, your religion and Christian organization, have they ever stood up in front of you and told you there is no comparison that the beast of the book of Revelation is not an antichrist whatsoever? You've probably never heard this before. Have you ever been shown this before? All you have to do is look at it from God's perspective. Read the Word of God. Believe what the Word of God says. Don't add to it. And don't take away from it. And you will plainly see what was presented to you is the truth in Scripture. And I hope it shocks the world. After you watch this video, go out and watch the thousands of videos out there on the Antichrist. And you will find, I'll bet you 99.9% .9 of them will tell you the Antichrist and they'll refer to the first beast in the book of Revelation. Because man cannot keep his finite mind and finite wisdom out of Scripture. The only way you're going to see the truth, the only way you're going to understand all this, the only way you're ever going to see it from a spiritual aspect and compare spiritual things with spiritual. And come on to the knowledge of the truth by being saved by the gospel and believe the things that Paul writes. It will give you understanding to all things. And that is to believe the gospel. Open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Chapter 15, 1 Corinthians, verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory that which I preached unto you, unless you've believed in vain. Verse 3, For I delivered first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. And verse 4, And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. That's the truth. That's unadulterated. 
You believe that by faith and faith alone, no works, leave man out of the equation, you will have eternal life. You don't have to worry about the Antichrist because there are Antichrists in this world. They've been in this world since the coming of Jesus Christ's first time on this earth in his earthly ministry and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ up until today. They have been here. They have nothing to do with the ages to come. They have nothing to do with the first beast in the book of Revelation. That is mistaught, wrong doctrine. These people that teach it are false teachers. I don't care what their name is. I don't care how many degrees, PhDs in theology they have, how many seminary colleges they have attended, how many churches they've pastored, how many people they've preached to. You believe God. Read God's word carefully and look what it says. Look what was shown to you in this video today. Don't take my word for it. If you have to read those references over and over again, read them over and over again. Repetition is a good thing. It tends to have things soak in. Please, ladies and gentlemen, the Antichrist is an opponent of Jesus Christ. The beast is a deceiver of Jesus Christ. Don't be deceived by man into believing that the Antichrists in this world are and are going to be associated as an Antichrist in the beast of the book of Revelation. You have been deceived long enough. It's time to come to the truth. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you listening. We're the Ministry of Reconciliation and Truth. We're at 301 Becker Street. Apartment 31, Turtle Lake, Wisconsin, 54889. The Ministry of Reconciliation and Truth, 301 Becker Street, Apartment 31, Turtle Lake, Wisconsin, 54889. And again, this is Robert Holler thanking you. Until next time.